Hey, Coach, I'm just going to go ahead and start it off with a bang. Are we going to see Ed, Olive, Ed Oliver on offense this year? I hope so. Uh, I've got the green light from the head man, so that's that's the number one key. But, uh, yeah, I mean, the guy's the most talented guy on the team. So if we can incorporate him down there, then we'll, we'll do that. Kendall, uh, Major was saying that if he had to put a number, he thought maybe 85% is what you guys accomplished in installing the the offense in the spring. And really now it's just kind of maybe – building on that if you see some things you need to add but where where do you feel like you guys came out of the spring and and what is going to be the <clears throat> emphasis when it comes to the, the the what you want to install um yeah i think that's a fair number 85 88 percent um the main thing is just the mechanics of how everything works you know uh, the tempo of the offense guys getting signals guys lining up the way that the offense is it's much different than that they've run here in the past so uh that's the biggest thing you know from a play standpoint you know that's just like you know, those guys going to class and learning a new subject. I mean, they're going to learn those those plays and the way we do them and the way we want them operated. So um, the main thing of this fall is, 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 number one, staying healthy. And, and the guys, you know, uh, we'll, we'll do a good job as coaches protecting them in that regard. But um, uh, I feel like we got some guys where, where we can create some things uh, for them offensively and uh, get them in space and hopefully be very successful doing that. Along those lines, uh, everywhere you've gone in terms of this offense, uh, the, the number of plays is a big part of pushing the tempo. Yeah. Um, is there a, I don't want to pigeonhole you with the number, but how, what makes that offense work in terms of, is it just, as Major put it, is humanly possible to run as many plays he said? Is that kind of what makes that offense go in terms of uh, just keeping defenses on their heels? Yeah, I mean, the more plays you're on, the more touches you're getting, guys, the more um, chances that you have to score. I mean, all those things fall into account. And then the, the, the more plays the defense is having to stay out there and having to go through a series. So if you can continually pick up first downs and continually tempo and not give them chances to really think, breathe, align, and then you have a better opportunity to have big plays. So that's that's what we try to do. Kendall, talk about the progression of uh, D'Eric. You know, having had the full spring to work out exclusively at quarterback, what do you see his ceiling as? Uh, I don't want to talk about his ceiling. Um, I know what I've got right now. Uh, the kid is a tremendous leader. I mean, as, as a person, he's, he's a better person than he is a player. I mean, he's just a tremendous ambassador for the university. I love working with him. Um, consistent, every day is the same with him. You know what you're getting every single day. Um, and then he's a great learner. I mean, he really cares about being a great quarterback and, and most of the great quarterbacks do. So when you have that, um, and then you, you got some God-given abilities then you have the opportunity to be successful. So. Hopefully, you know, he can kind of continue where he left off in the spring. He finished the spring really, really playing at a high level. Um, if he can continue to do that, then I think we'll like what we got. When you just mentioned their consistency and you know what you're getting with him, can you expand on that a little bit more? What are you getting with him um, specifically? And how does he fit into the to your offensive system? What parts of his game really work for that? Well, just the consistency part is just day-to-day -day the way that he lives his life. I mean, you know every single day that you're getting the same person, whether it's in the weight room with Rod, in the training room, um, with the academic people, with us in the meeting rooms. You're just getting the same person every day. And that's it's a great quality as an individual. So um, I know that that's the type of person he is. So I don't have to worry as, you know, is he going to be down today? What's he going to be like? It's going to be the same person. Uh, as far as tailoring him into the offense, I don't look at it like that. Um, my job as the offensive coordinator is to tailor our guys to fit what system we need to run. Um, so I'm, I'm never going to say, uh, you know, hey, this guy can't do this, so we can't do it. So, uh, you know, we're always going to try to find ways for our personnel to adapt. And, uh, and that's why we've, we've had a chance to be successful in the past is because we're, we're not afraid to adapt and change and, and fit our personnel to best fit. I can't tell you that. I mean, there's there's a couple things that, that we feel good about. Now we got to get it out there. It looks looks better on the board sometimes than it does when you run it. Um, but we feel good about a couple things and some players that we're able to get them the ball. Uh, I mean, the most excited thing I'm, you know, about the fall camp and the season and all that is just really the eagerness of of all the players. Um, I think we got a lot of hungry guys on offense who haven't really done a whole lot, um, and so they've kind of sat around and they've they've bide their time and. Um, now they have, you know, a new system and kind of a new new spark. And so I feel like these guys are just really, really eager to go out there and improve. And we're in a proven business. So um, I'm just really excited to watch those guys go work. 
Kendall, you're, you're real familiar with Terrence. Uh, yep. Wondering, uh, for those of us who haven't seen him, what kind of back the team's getting and does it make it a little bit more seamless transition that he's familiar with some of the things you want to do? Yeah, absolutely, that does. Um, if you've seen Terrence physically, then you're going to like the way he looks. I mean, he's a 6'2 plus, 225-pound running back who's got talent, he's got ball skills, he's got balance. Uh, he's tough, he's mean, which is what you want. He plays with an edge. Um, and I think we need that from an offensive standpoint. Um, we need to have an edge about us, and, and he's going to bring that for us. Um, he's had a little bit of some injuries throughout his, his career. Um, he's right now 100%, feel, says he feels great. Uh, so I'm excited to see him get back on the field. Um, you know, some of the, the calls are always adapting. They're always changing. So some of those things will be different. But from a mechanic standpoint, he's going to understand what we expect and how the offense runs. So I think it's going to be a seamless transition for him. Back there with this offense, do you rotate a lot in terms of who's back there, whether it's Mulba or Terrence, or, or do you ride one guy, you know, as much as you can? Well, I mean, it's like anything. If a guy's hot, you let him go. Um, but – the way that you tempo and, and actually, you know, kind of being down here in the south, it's hot, it's humid. So it's, um, you know, you can't really tempo if you're exchanging personnel. I'm sure you're privy to the game, so you understand that. So, you know, we run a guy off the field and they're going to build a sub defensively. They're going to slow the game and all that stuff. So if we're in a point where we're we're trying to play fast and, yeah, we're going to let a guy eat. Now, if we get to a stoppage or there's a penalty or something like that, then we can exchange some guys and get some fresh people on the field. But I do feel like with Mulba and Patrick and Kevin and, there's, there's a host of guys in that running back room. I do feel strong about them going into the fall camp. And, and pre-spring, I did not feel that way. So I feel, I feel a lot better about that room. Kendall, you were talking a lot about Derek earlier. You know, you get a sense for what he wants to do, make plays and things like that as your quarterback. Do you get a sense of his excitement level for leading this offense? He, have you met Derek? Yes. Yeah, he's, he's kind of reserved. You know, he's got a business approach in really everything that he does. Now you can see him, you know, cut up with the guys a little bit, but when he's when he's in the office building, and that's usually my engagements with him, he's he's pretty reserved with the way he is. But the thing that you can't hide is competitiveness. And when you watch tape and you see him make a throw, then you can see the body language, the reactions, and how much he cares. And that's the thing, you know, when I evaluate players is you know watching them not so much during the play, but you know after the play before the play what is your body language what you know you're talking all the time on the field so you can read those things and see how they're acting and i like the way he he holds himself on a personal side when you first got here you talked about the excitement of being back here how does it feel now to be back in in texas and coaching football it's awesome u of h is a is an awesome university obviously graduated from here my wife was a student athlete here so being back it's been uh been really cool and then you know doc o'shea my gosh he's been here forever and just seeing him on a daily basis i mean hopefully y'all get to interview him and he's the he's the best guy you can interview he's unbelievable but him still doing it strong and um and just so much excitement surrounding the program i mean in the city of houston just can't beat it so um, yeah i'm very blessed also on a personal side can you comment on maybe the excitement your dad has for getting back into coaching now having an opportunity to get back on the field yes yeah, great day for him i mean he he needs to be on the field coaching that's what he's done his entire life so um uh, fired up for him that'll be great obviously he's happy to be back there absolutely yeah i mean he's been two years without coaching so back on the field going it's that's where he belongs coach with your wide receiver core uh comes in this year you lose a lot of production from last year with the two guys that that went off to the to the nfl uh what are your hopes coming into camp as far as the mix of young guys that maybe have more speed some older guys that don't have as much experience but have more time in the program. What's the best way to meld that together and come up with your best group? Uh, you said the receivers, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, they're another guy. Those those guys are very eager. I talked about everybody offensively. I, I kind of think those guys are probably the most eager because, I don't know, you graduated maybe five seniors it was. Um, so there really hasn't been a lot of guys play. I mean, our leading receiver is actually Derek King. And so – you know, he's going to be throwing the ball to him now. But you've got some guys that have really busted their butt uh, all spring, all summer. Um, Terry Mark is, is one guy that comes to mind that's just been outstanding um, every single day. I mean, Keith Corbin, Courtney Lark, Marquez, Stevenson, all those guys have done a tremendous job. And then you add Raylon in the group, kind of see what he's, he, he's capable of doing. Um, but, you know, there's not a guy that is just the guy, you know, um, I don't think so yet. So, I mean, that's that's a good thing because you got a lot of different weapons. So we'll see who emerges. 
you had told us in the spring or when you got here that, you know, there's no designation between inside and outside. It's just you're the best guys. The fact, you know. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I remember that part. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. The, uh, just when you look at it, have you been able to identify, you know, speed's such a big part. Have you been able to identify, you know, that part of it in terms of, you know, what you have? They say you can't teach speed, but what you have on that front and, you know, maybe who some of those guys are. Yeah, I think, you know, from a speed standpoint, uh, Courtney, Terry, and uh, Mark Wes are probably three of your faster. And then Keith Corbin, you know, he's not going to go run low four fours, but he plays fast, and he's a very savvy receiver. And I like the way that he – he understands the game. Uh, he reminds me of Terrence Williams, who's with the Cowboys that I coached and recruited. And he, he's just – he understands how to play football. And uh, when you have a guy like that and you couple it with some talent, then you got a pretty good football player. So I feel good about that room. Uh, Coach Guyton does a tremendous job coaching those guys. Um, so they'll be, they'll be dialed in, ready to go. And to piggyback off of his other receiver question, uh, to have Bryson, uh, the ability now to, to use him at receiver and – uh, how will that process go in the spring in terms of will he work any at quarterback? Would you like to, to just kind of make him – let let him focus on one area? No, he'll be in the quarterback room. Um, I'll, I'll meet with Bryson. Now, he, you know, we'll be able to have some, some things for him. And, you know, it's no secret. If you have a guy that's really talented, then you, you find ways to get him the ball. And he's, he's kind of that guy. He's very explosive. Um, I think he can handle it from a mental capacity. So, you know, bringing Quentin Dormady in – and him having a chance to um, to come in here and compete, and then that that kind of softens the blow for being able to put another guy like Bryson Smith on the field at other positions.